The following infrared videos taken in Singapore show the feeding behaviors for a clade of three homoopsid snake genera that specialize on different crustacean prey. During their initial attack, Cantoria often pin the shrimp against the mud with their body before biting them. The following snapping sound was made by the shrimp. However, vigorous movements of the tail were more effective than snapping for escaping from the snakes. Swallowing usually proceeded from the tail to the head of the shrimp. Rather than forming coils all the way around the prey, Cantoria often just placed part of their body or neck on top of the prey to help restrain it during most of the swallowing process. For a given overall body length or total mass, the maximal gape of Cantoria is extremely small compared to that of the other two species that eat crabs. Perhaps Cantoria partially compensates for this by eating prey with a much more cylindrical shape than crabs, and Cantoria in the field often ate shrimp that were relatively large compared to their maximal gait. Although this species of snake has rear fangs, no effects of venom on the prey were observed. This trial with Verdonia shows that the initial capture of hard shell crabs is often very difficult. Verdonia uses a unique closed mouth strike, quickly followed by pressing down with its chin and then neck to pin the crab against the mud. This clip of a different snake shows how Fredonia swallows. Fredonia uses highly variable body postures, or coils, to continue restraining the prey for most of the swallowing process, and the head of the snake often remains beneath the body as swallowing proceeds. Fredonia usually swallows the crabs from side to side, rather than from front to back. The large display claws of some crabs, such as this male Metaplex elegans, often complicate swallowing, and it took this snake more than 20 minutes to get past the first claw and begin engulfing the carapace. This next sequence shows how some of the behaviors used by Fredonia change with the size of the crab. Especially when crabs were larger than 90% of the maximal gape area of Fredonia, they would sometimes break off a leg and eat it before consuming the rest of the crab. Sometimes this involved little tugging movements against the crab as it was being held by the body, and other times it just seemed as if the snakes would keep swallowing until they bumped into the carapace and then the leg would break off. Unlike Fredonia, Gerarda only eats soft, freshly molted crabs, and it commonly eats crabs that are too large to be swallowed whole. As is usual for snakes, the initial attack of Gerarda usually involved an open mouth strike. If Gerarda's first contact was with the legs of the crab, they often were easily broken off and swallowed.
Gerarda usually starts to swallow the carapace of crabs from front to back, even though this increases the effective cross-sectional area of its prey. Gerarda uses a very stereotyped behavior to rip large crabs apart into separate pieces or at least deform the shape enough so that it can be swallowed. While holding the crab with its mouth, Gerarda loops its body tightly around its neck. Gerarda then pulls the crab through this loop until it is torn apart or deformed. The number of these loop and pull behaviors increases significantly with increased prey size. As with all the other crustacean-eating homolopsids, we found no evidence that the rear fang venom apparatus of Gerarda affected its prey. In addition to destroying the structural integrity of the carapace of this crab, this particular snake ultimately consumed this crab in four separate pieces. Also notice how rapidly Gerarda can consume a very large amount of mass compared to the other species of crustacean-eating snakes. So there are several advantages besides merely avoiding the possibility of injury by specializing on freshly molted crabs rather than hard shell crabs.